The Australian Film, Television and Radio School presents Basic Radio Skills, a series of training programs that lets you see radio in action and supplies you with the information you need to get started in broadcasting. The President has left the White House. Basic Radio Skills gives you practical information on the technical aspects of presenting radio as well as broadcasting theories, tips and advice from active radio professionals. You can learn to make good radio, starting with the Radio Studio. All consoles do the same thing. They put a program to air, but different ones do it in different ways. Ours may be different to yours, but we'll stick to functions which are common to most of them. Throughout this program, we'll be concentrating on three functions on the console. Channel 1, Channel 2, and the Q mode. The microphone you use as a presenter is the unidirectional, which isn't as sensitive to unwanted sounds and makes your voice sound nice and warm. Most of that good performance comes from being fully prepared, not just in what you say, but in the operation of the various pieces of equipment working together to produce a smooth program for you and your listener. Basic Radio Skills Program 2 is another hands-on practical demonstration covering the importance of editing tape and how to do it in detail. What you're seeing is the result of editing, the cutting and arranging of sounds and images for effect or smoother presentation. We edit in radio for much the same reasons. In the newsroom, a journalist may need a quick, pertinent comment to back up a story. We also edit to remove stumbles or ums and ahs, as well as long, rambling statements. One of these forms of editing will be used. The splice. And dub or drop editing. Basic Radio Skills Program 3 highlights the different styles of radio presentation. The hardest part of the job is remaining consistent because the audience depends on me to deliver the same product every day. What better way to find out about being an announcer or presenter than go straight to the people who do it every day? Different stations, different styles. One thing these presenters all agree on, though, is that radio is a one-to-one -one medium. It doesn't matter what sort of station you work for or what your show is. You have to know who you're talking to. You have to focus on your audience. Being aware of your listener partly have, has to do with what station you're working for. So you know who your target audience is supposed to be. Now you have to develop skills to fully communicate with them. What's the best way? You have to develop the ability to talk and to listen to yourself talking. We've collected some of those thoughts for you from people in the know, experienced radio professionals who know the meaning of being prepared. Basic Radio Skills Program 4 examines the radio interview, one of the most challenging and important aspects of radio broadcasting. We interviewed the interviewers about interviewing. Uh, first of all, I guess the basic question is, why do interviews at all? Well, Mike, it's often the best way to get the necessary information across to the public at large. If you try and convey a whole ream of just speaking, it can be very boring. A good interview is very entertaining. It also gives the chance, if you're interviewing a real personality, to let their personality come across as well. Let them do half the work for you. Paul Murphy, hard or soft interviews? Well, I suppose there's a distinction, but uh, I'm not too keen on that. Uh, obviously, if you're talking to Paul Keating about uh, whether or not he's destroying the Australian economy, uh, that's not going to be a soft personality interview, uh, if I accept that uh, terminology, which I don't really, because um, perhaps I might um, kick off with Keating about whether he's still listening to Marla and then get on to uh, the current account deficit. The radio interview asks the questions and gets the answers. Alan, thanks for coming in. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Basic Radio Skills Program 5 examines radio news. What makes it different from press and TV? People turn to their newspaper for a full rundown of what's happening. Uh, people turn to their TV to see what's happened during the day. But when people turn on the radio news, they want to know what's happening now. 
Pensioners will pay an extra 50 cents for each visit to the doctor. Before we look at the mechanics of writing and presenting radio news, where does news come from? Craig Middleton. We've got news coming in from a variety of sources. We have our own reporters out in the field uh, covering the parliaments at state and federal level. We have a re police reporter and we have general reporters out on the road in the news cars. We often get a lot of material from the police radio. The, the, the trick is though, the requirement is that we check with the police before we do put that to air. Victory to stay in touch with the top five. Program six. Talking Back takes a detailed like look at Talkback Radio, one of the most popular and important and areas of radio information and entertainment. Before you put calls to air, you either pre-record the conversation while a record is playing, or you go into delay. Bruce Barnett chairs a panel of radio talkback specialists covering news and entertainment formats to magazine style and music programs. Again, it's very important to go with the suggestion from the producer, from the telephonist, from the person who's taking the calls. Sometimes up will come in brackets, uh, boring, not very good, mm. or other times excellent. People want to hear you saying something about the issue. I don't, I, think, I don't think they want to hear just a bland presentation. I think they want to hear you expressing a view and taking a stand because then they listen to you because they think you stand for something. How to make a caller relaxed, traps for young players, all of these subjects are covered by the people who are talking back for a living. Program 7. I won't forget the day she came into my office. How can I help? I want to know how to write a radio. Radio writing. She seemed desperate. I just had to help her. It was a tall order, but that was what I was here for. Almost everything you hear on radio has been scripted. In this two-part program, we talk to writers of news and current affairs, commercials and comedy. We examine the theories and rules, as well as the craft of writing good, effective radio communication. It's got to get their attention, then you've got to write down the facts uh, and get that message over. That is your job. Your job is to communicate accurately and quickly to the listener. British environmentalist Jonathan Porritt speaking with Chris Hutchings. Yeah, in all writing, simplicity is the essence, it, and it's the hardest thing to achieve. The only real rule is that there are no rules. I think if you start constraining yourself by rules, uh, then you merely limit what you can and can't do. OK, so the next thing to do is find out what these rules that aren't rules are. You'll learn them when you start your first job, but believe me, it won't be a fairy tale beginning. Examples of points to remember and different writing styles are highlighted throughout the program in a graphic and often novel way, using the fairy tale Jack and Jill as a point of reference. We need a better introduction. Jack and Jill went up the hill isn't strong enough. Tragedy has struck a small country town where a young man has been killed while collecting water from the local supply. A radio commercial is another area where choosing words wisely is vital. With radio, you are using spoken language rather than written language. It's very, very different. The way people speak and the way they write is quite different. Well, the Jack and Jill story, of course, uh, as most people have realised, it lends itself eminently to being treated by Roy and HG. Um, I think the thing is that uh, Jack, of course, would be a graduate of uh, one of the toughest codes of Australian football, either the Rugby League or the AFL. Most gags work in three, so we have set up feed tag. As an example, my wife's gone to the West Indies, Jamaica, no, she went of her own accord. Radio writing, the most rewarding and challenging area of radio. Program 8, copyright. Radio broadcasters have to understand copyright for two reasons. One, because a broadcast is a copyright item itself, and you better know what you're doing with your own livelihood. The other one is that broadcasters use other copyright materials. They use other people's property. Copyright's a bit of a misnomer because it's not just about the right to make copies, but also a number of other rights, um, which can be dealt with together as a bundle or dealt with separately. When a song is played, at least two, and often three or four, rights are involved. Copyright. We talk to the controlling bodies and show you how they relate to each other and how they affect you as a radio broadcaster. My advice to people is don't believe, you know, everyone you talk to, speak to the people that know. Basic Radio Skills Programs 1 to 8, available now.